Hey everybody, what's happening? Thank you for watching here this video. We are gonna be going over your spring outlook for 2025 going into April and May, looking at your severe weather season going into April and May as well as your early preview to summer as we go deeper into the video. So make sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up and share this video with friends, family and on social media. And also very importantly, subscribe to my channel for the latest reliable and accurate weather information as we go forward. We do long long range forecasts, short range forecasts, severe weather season forecasts, hurricane season forecasts. We do it all here on the channel. So make sure to subscribe down below. Let's get into the video here. What you're seeing currently is your sea surface temperature anomalies. Notice down here towards South America, up there towards southern Mexico, we have the orange blobs. That is warmer than normal sea surface anomalies. And then west of there into the central and what we call equatorial Pacific, that's where we have the blue blobs. Those are cooler than normal temperature anomalies there. So what we are seeing right now is we are in ENSO neutral conditions, but that El Nino is starting to poke in across South America there and near southern Mexico, the Central America as well. That warmer water is actually going to be pushing a little bit further west with time as we go deeper into this spring and likely into this summer. So that will have significant uh, amplifications for uh, what our pattern could look like as we go in towards early summer. So here is the latest on the Nino index right now. What you're looking at is a chart. It has positive numbers above zero negative numbers below zero, and then you have zero, which is ENSO neutral. So zero is ENSO neutral. Positive numbers, especially once you get towards uh, plus 0 0.5, and then you get a little bit higher than that, that is what we are considering El Nino. And then when you get below negative 0 0.5, that is what you consider La Nina. So right now we are kind of in a cold phase ENSO neutral right now. We are actually continuing to meander back and forth between kind of a warm phase and a cold phase ENSO neutral. But the projections are we're going to be going closer towards a warm phase neutral and then maybe even a weak El Nino as we enter in towards summer. So something to keep an eye on there. Here's the latest. I know we only have a few days or so of March left. This is what March looks like as a whole when you average all 31 days out. Here's the expected temperature anomalies. The warmest of the air really right across the Great Plains there and all the way up into the southern Canadian prairies. So if you were living in the Great Plains, it has been a warm March so far. Uh, a little bit cooler though as of late, but when you average all these 31 days out, it is going to be a warmer than average March. Uh, normal March where you see the whites over there in the west coast, so Washington State southward to especially central California, we see more of a normal March as far as our temperature anomalies are concerned. Concern. Now turning over to March precipitation, again, I know we only have a few days left, but this is the 31 day average showing the Pacific Northwest uh, well above normal with our precipitation. Uh, we've had a lot of active storms across the Pacific Northwest that will continue through late March. Also very active, the Great Lakes into the Midwest and Ohio Valley up there into southeastern Canada and then interior sections of the Northeast. That's I-95 and on northwestward from there. So we're talking upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine above normal and even at times above, well above normal precipitation across those areas. Now, yes, we have had heavy precipitation and some significant severe weather outbreaks. We actually did have a high risk of severe weather in Dixie Alley. Notice down there from East Texas through Dixie Alley there into the Carolinas and Florida, we are seeing the yellows and oranges. That is below normal to even well below normal precipitation. That is likely to continue as we go deeper here into the month of March and really to kind of close out the month. Now, going into the new month of April, we are going to see a little bit of a change in our weather pattern. You can see across the desert southwest, and obviously there's a desert over here, so we understand it's a little bit warmer this time of year when we get into the warm season, but it's going to be well above normal in the Four Corners regions, and then you can see a little bit of that warmer air pushing up towards South Dakota, Nebraska, a little bit cooler or at least near normal with our temperatures further east, especially near the New England coast there. You can see a little bit of light blue off the coast of Cape Cod and Long Island. That means you can see a little bit of some cooler variations there as we go through the month of April. So we're leaning warmer west and a little bit cooler east as we average all of the days out here of April. And then looking at precipitation, April looks to be the most active up there in southern Canada especially, but also the Great Lakes region. I think we're going to be pretty active up there. So if you live in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, all the way up into parts of the 
northeast and into southeastern Canada. We're going to see near normal to even slightly above normal precipitation up there. Further off to the south and west where we have that ridge of high pressure anchored across the Four Corners region, that's where the warmer air is. We're going to see the drought expand as we go into April. I think the drought really will begin to build across these regions with below normal precipitation. And then down toward the Gulf Coast in the southeast, including Texas, Florida, all these areas over into the Carolinas, we're going to see below normal to even well below normal precipitation here. Not to say we can't see any rain or snow at all, but we're seeing pretty much uh, pretty dry conditions through the average of April here as we go through the month. Now looking here at May, going into May, we're seeing the warmer air expanding a little bit further east here. So the Four Corners region, it'll start in April and I think it'll just shift a little bit further east towards the central and southern high plains and that really is in tandem with a widespread drought. I think the drought is really going to be feeding our temperatures as we go into May. And you can still see over there just off the New England coast, those blues. So we're still going to be seeing some variation of some cooler air further east off the eastern seaboard as we go into the month of May. Now precipitation in May going to be a little bit varied here. We are going to be seeing the potential for those ridge riders. So we got to watch that here with the potential of thunderstorm clusters, maybe even an early season derecho across portions of the Dakotas, Minnesota, down into the Midwest, like Iowa, Wisconsin, North northern Illinois into portions there of Michigan, obviously watching that threat further north into southern Canada as well. But underneath of that ridge axis, we're not going to see a lot of precipitation. We're going to see a lot of hot, dry air there in May. So the west, especially the desert southwest, and then eastward down across Dixie Alley, the southern plain is going to be very dry. Those dust storms that we've been seeing lately will likely continue to worsen even as we go deeper into spring here, especially into May. May looks like a pretty dry month down there overall. Now, when you average all three of the months out between what we have left of March here all the way through May, the end of May, this is what you see for your temperature outlook for the spring season. And you can see the warmest will be from the central into the southern high plains, and that is expected because of our drought going on right now and the drought that's really going to continue to intensify. Dry ground heats up faster, believe it or not, than a wet ground does. So that's expected to really amplify our temperatures across the plains this spring season. Over there into portions of the northeast, especially off the northeast coast, we could be seeing near normal temperatures for the rest of the spring season. Yes, there'll be warm days. Yes, there'll be colder days. But when you average them out, pretty much a near normal spring for the New England coast. Now, as far as precipitation goes for the spring season, again, what we have left in March all the way through the end of May looks wetter across the Pacific Northwest. You can see some green up there. British Columbia going to be feasting off some late season snowstorms, believe it or not. And then up here into the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, lower Midwest, southeastern Canada, and then into the Northeast. Near normal to above normal precipitation can be expected here through May. And then across portions of the Deep South, we're going to be drying out. Again, that drought will really really become a lot more widespread and that warmth will as well. So it's going to be drying out across the deep south. Now looking ahead at the spring severe weather outlook here, we do have a few days left in March. So there's not really a reason why I have to show you a map of March. We do have a severe weather chance coming up this weekend that could bring some damaging winds, hail and tornadoes. Let's look at the April severe weather outlook here. Very interesting. So really along and east of the Rockies, you see this yellow color that is a low risk of severe weather, can't rule it out. And the orange, that is an elevated risk that extends all the way up into the upper Midwest, Minneapolis, Rapid City, up there towards Pittsburgh, and even into Charleston, West Virginia. Into the red, that is a significant risk of severe weather, especially once you get into the red shaded color. That's where we could have more of those major outbreaks. So we're talking major severe weather outbreaks, major tornado outbreaks, much like the mid-Mississippi Valley did see here around the middle of March, the 14th, 15th, that saw over 100 tornadoes. Something like that could happen sometime in April, and especially the red shaded color, that's a more significant risk for that happening. And then in the maroon reds there from Memphis, Nashville, Paducah, all the way south to New Orleans there, we have some other big cities in the mix, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Jackson, all the way down to Shreveport, Little Rock. You guys get the idea here. That is a high risk for that happening. So I think there's a very good chance that we see a significant severe weather outbreak or a significant tornado outbreak in that region as we go through sometime in the month of April. Now going over into the May severe weather outlook, I think with ENSO changing, we're going to get closer to that warm phase of ENSO neutral and then eventually a weak El Nino some point 
getting closer towards the summer. That will shift the severe weather and the climatology of severe weather will shift further north with time. And it's really going to be centered across the lower part of the Midwest into the western Ohio Valley and the mid Mississippi Valley here. Again, very similar areas that in the middle of March, that 14th, 15th time frame of March had over 100 tornadoes. That is kind of the area we're watching for May and maybe a little further north towards St. Louis there into Chicago, Des Moines, even Madison, Wisconsin, keeping an eye on that and that high risk for that happening. And then in the red, again, that's a significant risk that extends all the way up into Minneapolis, into portions of Green Bay, Detroit, all the way down into Akron, Ohio, into portions there of Columbus, all the way down into Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we're talking areas of Asheville, North Carolina, Knoxville. Those areas have a more significant risk for a severe weather outbreak or a tornado outbreak there in May. So that's the area we're watching as we go into April and May. So for severe weather, that is what we're looking for. Let's look at your early preview to summer. We're not going to go deep into the diving of the summer forecast just too far out right now, but let's look here at kind of a overall big picture kind of trend right now. So we're looking at June, July, and August, the three month average looks like a pretty hot summer if you live in the north central United States here. So if you live from the Dakotas all the way down to Oklahoma, and really just anywhere along and west of the Mississippi River. It's going to look like a pretty hot summer here. Maybe a near normal summer, maybe slightly below normal, I would argue, across the eastern seaboard there from Maine all the way down toward the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. Could be averaging a near normal summer or even slightly below normal with our temperatures. And looking at precipitation going into the summer, yes, where you see the highest temperature anomalies is where you're going to see the lowest precipitation anomalies, which means below normal, and that is expected to expand our drought. So the reach of our drought is going to expand even further north now as we go into June, especially July and August. So that will cover a lot of the Midwest and the Western Ag Belt. This could actually be very disruptive to any of the farmers out there across the middle of the country because a widespread significant drought is not good for yielding corn or uh, even bean yields either. So definitely watching that for the Western Ag Belt. The eastern part of the Ag Belt, like Ohio, Kentucky, over there to West Virginia and Pennsylvania, looking a little bit better. We're looking at near normal precipitation to above normal precipitation. So the eastern part of the Ag Belt is actually looking pretty decent for yields of corn and beans this year. And that is something we're keeping an eye on. Also very noticeable here in the desert southwest. Notice there's not a lot of brown or yellow over here. We actually are expecting an above normal monsoon season here across Southern California, Arizona, and New Mexico. So that is some great news for an area that hasn't really seen a great monsoon season the last couple of summers I think this summer is the time that we could actually see a pretty above normal monsoon season for the Phoenix area Albuquerque Las Vegas San Diego these areas could definitely have a pretty decent monsoon season overall but it doesn't negate the threat for a drought. So let's look at the U.S. seasonal drought outlook that was just released the other day. This goes all the way between now and June 30th of 2025. Notice we are seeing drought development likely in yellow there. So that's going to expand across Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and really kind of start to expand into the eastern plains at times, especially as we get into the middle of summer. We are seeing the drought removal likely there across parts of the lower Midwest, like Iowa, southern Wisconsin, Illinois, into Michigan parts of Indiana and then parts of the Northeast there as well. Also drought removal likely in Florida. So that just is because the precipitation is going to be shifting further east. The deeper we go into spring and the deeper we go into summer and the drier weather will continue across the North Central. So that's why you're in the brown. Drought will persist likely in the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Iowa as we go into the 30th there of June. So that is my spring and early summer preview with the severe weather season in the mix. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel like the video give it a thumbs up especially if you didn't enjoy it again and also share this video with friends family and on social media just kind of a general overview of what to expect as we go through spring and summer with the drought the severe weather the temperatures the precipitation the whole thing here so that is what we're looking at thank you for watching everybody hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you all in another weather forecast